I think one of the most important um, crossovers is almost one of the most mundane is that is that you had time mm -hmm. um, and and the kind of the imp imprimatur mm -hmm. um, to devote to working on a f an unproven form of graduate student production right? mm -hmm. um, at least um, and this is not to say unprecedented, mm -hmm. but I think uh, we think about what are the expectations for graduate students and how we train them. The default setting continues to be this a pre-professional, uh, a pre-academic you know, um, academic professional mm -hmm. uh, model in which the labor is devoted towards replicating the forms mm -hmm. that have been the lingua franca of academic published discourse for ever. Mm -hmm. uh, book reviews, conference yeah. papers at midterm, full-length dress rehearsal article, mm -hmm. research article at the end. Um, um, on top of that, you all have your own teaching and employment obligations, so you know when could you possibly find the time to develop in the ways that um, increasingly more and more people are saying you as graduate students need to grow, right, to take advantage of these new things, to develop in interesting ways. One of the favorite narratives in digital humanities has been about this kind of technical autodidact, mm -hmm. the hacker, tinkerer, builder, who also teaches themselves everything. Mm -hmm. And only, you know, I think one of the goals of, um, of, of our class was to, to not only share some of the tools for you know, how might you start messing around uh, mm -hmm. or building, but also to institutionalize some of the time um, mm -hmm. um, um, that you could that you could start to devote to it and to also encourage the kind of collaborative um, possibilities uh, in which that work really flourishes. Um, I am a, um, um, this may be a little bit, so at these borders of what are the sort of traditional expectations for graduate students, or do we want to standardize them, mm -hmm. you know, what does a dissertation look like, a paper output, yeah. what, should, what, is your, what is your time used for? Um, um, I think one of the, um, one of the crossovers mm -hmm. in between our course and the project was, was merely that, right? Yeah. Um, and I think those institutional conditions are, are um, extremely important to acknowledge, in addition to the um, myriad intellectual possibilities that um, that anyway I will I wanted the course to also facilitate in mm -hmm. terms of this is where you might intersect with geographic information systems yeah. where you might intersect with you know theories of visuality and data mm -hmm. uh, with um, with thinking about does database have a hermeneutics right, or yeah. of coding and markup so there's um, so the co the course was kind of constantly crashing through mm -hmm. um, possible boundaries mm -hmm. and, in, and in inviting anyone interested to sort of step across them and see. And so a project like this, mm -hmm. I think, did just that, seeing the opportunities um, in relating uh, various theories of archive mm -hmm. with, um, with, the, with the practices of um, coding, description, collaboration uh, that it was also drawing from. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm interested. I was fascinated to read the projects, or the, the yeah. initial write-ups, um, further speculations mm -hmm. about its own, about the archives' okay. own um, challenge of boundaries and knowledge yeah. borders and knowledge making. Mm -hmm. I thought that was its most stunning and inspiring. Mm -hmm. um, um, conclusion is that um, the very practice of building um, mm -hmm. um, revealed certain discourses uh, and changing boundaries or, or whatever, mm -hmm. however we're going to talk about it, um, that, that building may, m meant something, you know. Yeah. Um, so how, if anything, does this project relate to what you've been studying? I would say as far as the um, 
the media side of it, you get a lot of experience sort of working with databases, which is a thing that's, you know, it's not directly sort of in the the mindset of an English major yeah. all the time. Uh-huh. And um, it's not something I would have initially gone for, but I sort of, over the years I've been here and like taking computer classes sort of on the side, I've been like, you know, this stuff's more important than it used to be, even for, uh-huh. you know, an English major. <laughs> How'd you work on Access, for one. Mm-hmm. Um, by building our own archive, I have access to materials that I would not, would have been otherwise unavailable. Um, not only unavailable, but I wouldn't even have realized they existed. Mm-hmm. So building this archive gives me access to materials that I'm interested in studying, uh, it gives me knowledge of materials that I'm interested in studying, both in terms of range, scope, and depth, that I wouldn't have had otherwise. So I think it's incredible. I see the archive serving, I suppose, two primary purposes for our PhD students. It reminds them of the materiality of communication, the, the, the impact that the medium has on the message and on the circulation of that message. Um, it also, so it's, it's an, a, a kind of intellectual orientation because it's, it's here, we have it, it's part of how we identify ourselves as a program. And so it keeps, it keeps emphasizing the materiality of communication. Mm-hmm. And that materiality operates on so many different levels and they can see the ways in which then how the postcard functions as a kind of metaphor for their own research projects, and it reminds them to ask questions about materiality. Um, And then the second thing is it invites research projects. Mm -hmm. It opens up opportunities and options for research projects that we wouldn't have if we didn't have the archive. We do have... um a uh, uh, graduate program in rhetoric and composition, and there is increasing interest, I think, in the program in everyday writing. And when I say in the program, I mean on the faculty and on the student side. So um, at the least, um, such an archive will give us some materials to think with. I can imagine faculty um, using them in class. I'm teaching visual rhetoric, for instance, in the fall. And, um, And not only... Uh, might we tap the archive? It turns out, uh, 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 who knew, um, you can actually propose um, a design for a stamp um, that can go on a postcard or on a letter to the postal service. And we will be doing that actually <laughs> in, the rhetoric in the fall. That is one of the smaller projects that students will be engaged in. So there are various kinds of connections that we can create through this archive. Uh, uh, clearly, some research is already being conducted, um, ergo uh, this interview and um, the piece that you all um, are working on. Um, and we do have, as I um, alluded, when I alluded to Nicole, who's a um, uh, uh, very smart undergraduate, um, we're beginning to create some internships uh, uh, where the students can be engaged in some of the um, uh, work creating the archive, I mean, categorizing uh, materials in the archive, annotating them, and so forth. And my hope is that actually we'll, we'll create an internship program, and actually my hope is that we could connect with some donors who would fund it. That's basically what I hope, and I'd like to see people who are interested in this kind of work. And the the thing about this is that everyday people find this kind of work pretty interesting, and I can um, cite um, a couple of pieces of evidence that suggest that, and my hope is that they will find it sufficiently interesting that they would actually like to make the work um, uh, more possible. But the other thing that's going on here that will have an interface with the program is that um, we are having um, uh, we are cr- in the midst of creating um, an institute or center I'm not sure which word we're going to use for everyday writing when I um, wrote up the uh, sort of um, big idea for this um, I did talk about um, scholars from around the world coming to work with the archive possibly donating their own materials as well. 
um, are having fellowships for graduate students, are having fellowships for undergraduates, are hosting symposia um, uh, or conferences around these materials. Um, so the ambitions are large. Um, uh, the finances are weak <laughs> or small, to, <laughs> but um, but I think I, I'm told that this is a vision um, that um, uh, will have a lot of appeal, and my hope is that that's true. So I see current activity of very conventional sorts, taking it into classrooms, for example, uh, but I see long-term activity. Um, being uh, uh, as uh, large as your imagination.